Well, hello there, and analog greetings to you. Uh, so, today I have decided that I would record my record collection, and since it is so special to me, I had decided that I would record it on analog tape, so I can uh, archive it in somewhere safe and I can have a recording of this somewhere safe so I took out uh, my parents old uh, video 8 camera and yeah I'm recording it on this old video 8 camera and digitizing it will be my will be the hardest part um, but uh, yeah well let's get on with the collection shall we I'll be uh, going through it in alphabetical order and I'll well I'll go in alphabetical order through the the composers the bands and into the bands and the composers I will go in in a chronological order when I have multiple multiple albums I do not have uh, multiple albums of uh, a lot of uh, composers because my my collection isn't that big really it's only well I've never checked but it's like 20 records so it's it's growing I will be uh, hopefully posting updates which will be recorded on this camera too so yeah let's start first record the Alan Parsons project a robot now this is the first record I got at the record store that I visit um, let me take it out of the of its protective sleeve that I visit regularly these days as you can see it is a nice gatefold mm -hmm. with a picture of Alan Parsons and all of the stuff right there there's all of the stuff mm -hmm. track listing all of the stuff there's lyric sheet mm -hmm. Alan Parsons and there's a nice little quote right there I robot the story of the rise of the machine and the decline of man which paradoxically considered considered oh, I'm not sure how you pronounce that with his discovery of the wheel and the warning that his brief dominance of the of this planet will probably end because man tried to create robot in his own image yeah. So this is the first record I got at the record store that I visit now pretty much every week. And well it's a record that I actually love. It is the first record that I heard uh from the Alan Parsons project. And I just loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Um I love the instrumental at the at the start I love the lyrics I love uh, how uh, intrinsically composed it is it is well impressive to say the least next we have Dylan Parsons project prime time this is a maxi single 45 rpm can see right there um, well it's a maxi single with prime time of course on the A side and let me go home and pipeline on the B side uh, this is ex extracted from the album Ammonia Avenue which is another album from the Alan Parsons project that I gotta buy probably next time that I visit uh, 
the record store so that's that next one this one's really heavy because it's actually two records and I'm gonna Gucci endless fantasy if you like chip tunes and you don't own this album buy it buy it now right now this album is like the quintessential essential uh, part of uh, chip tunes you need this album let me take it out of the sleeve right here as you can see it is very very nice the detailing on the cover is really nice it is really well done we have the track the track listing right here on the inside we have a gatefold of course a little bit of an anime head inside of a cube have a little bit of the stuff you have the Anamanaguchi crew right here all lovely looking a little bit of random stuff and uh, this is actually rever reversible I'm not gonna re reverse it but you can actually turn this around and make this the main cover of the record as you can see uh, you have this right here so you can just reverse this and make this the cover of the record <laughs> now this is a special no. record because it is printed well pressed sorry it is pressed not in any kind of vinyl but it is pressed on clear vinyl with some color splotches right there as you can see and that is really really nice and it doesn't affect the sound at all this thing sounds beautiful it is a really nice pressing it doesn't affect sound at all I haven't been able to tell uh, this from the digital copy that they give you they give you a little paper inside uh, inside the record sleeve so you can download a, a digital copy of this record and I haven't been able to tell the difference apart from you know uh, the odd uh, crack and pop from the vinyl I haven't been able to tell the difference between this and the digital copy no surface noise, no... nothing really not what you expect from those weird printings uh, pressings, sorry those weird pressings put it back into its sleeve just a little bit hard because this thing is thick this thing is really thick. Oh, by the way, it is a double LP. The whole album doesn't fit on a single LP, so it is a double LP. That's the reason why it is so thick. Next, the black keys turn blue. Now, this album got a lot of bad reviews. Especially from Anthony Fantano saying that the instrumentation was a little bit over the top um, and this and say, stating that this album was a little bit too progressive for being a Black Keys album. Now what do I think about this? Uh, I love it. It has grown on me. I got the first impression. I got That was my first imp impression and I didn't really like it but uh, it grew on me and now I, l I pretty much love this album um, take it out of the 
its sleeve, as you can see. On the inside we have this little turned blue sleeve with a record inside it, right here. Listing of all the stuff and track listing. This also came with the CD. Came with a CD inside it, which I, which I do prefer to a, to a digital download because with the CD you can just rip it on flag and there you go, you have your digital copy. It also came with a poster, which is well, too big to show on camera, but I did. But it's pretty much just the album cover in a gigantic size. Pretty nice matte uh, finish on this. I really like it. Uh, this stated wrong. As you can see, the record actually comes out of this side. It should come out from the top. So you have to actually store this sideways on the on the record uh, cover so dust doesn't get in it next one Bonium some Bonium this I got at a flea market for two euro. It is pretty clean and it sounds beautiful. This is Boney M on 45. Uh, six years of hits from Boney M. Now, can you imagine uh, a modern uh, pop star uh, having hits during six years in the time period of six years? That's unthinkable now, these days. But hey, back in the day. So that this is uh, a mix of well, pretty much every hit from Boney M on the S on the A side. It is a mix uh, of every hit from Boney M. Uh, they all mixed together in a 12 minute long mix which well doesn't sound that bad but my interesting uh, my pr main interest on this was as you can see Rios of Babylonia right here Rivers of Babylon is the extended version of Rivers of Babylon on the B side this runs at 45 RPM as you can see maxi single right here it's a 12 inch signal single and yeah the extended version of rivers of babylon is what i was interested in next one random access memories by daft punk uh what can i say about this album it's not daft punk it's not Daft Punk, it's collaborations with uh, other artists, so yeah, not Daft Punk at all. Uh, it's as disco as it gets in these days, I guess. And the attention to detail on this is just amazing, it is just amazing. Um, this is really thick pressings. It is a double LP. Oops, move the camera right there. It is a double LP. Right here, as you can see. One LP here, one LP here. 180 gram pressings. This thing's heavy as all heck. On the inside, we've got a picture of a synthesizer. Clear. It is a clear synthesizer. Let me turn it around because it is upside down for some reason. So there we go, a nice picture of a synthesizer. And it looks 
beautiful. Um, it also comes with a booklet, a little booklet right here. Which, you know, states, as you can see, the sign of the masks and states all of the, you know, all of the lyrics, all of the stuff. And there's a truck listing right there. Very beautiful. This album is just uh, wonderful. <laughs> this is humble. This album is just wonderful. Even if it is a departure from uh, uh, Daft Punk's uh, electronic sampling uh, music, I love this album. I just love it. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now, a single from that. So, get lucky. That's. I got this for f five bucks. So, not bad. This was before the album was released. Get lucky. Well, you know, that song. That was a hit. Um. I really loved the album, I loved Get Lucky, so I got the single. And even it, even though it is a 12 inch sig single, um, it runs at 33 RPM, which is pretty weird, but whatever. There it is. Lovely vocals by... You know, Pharrell Williams. This one I think I destroyed because at the time I bought this, I wasn't really into vinyl, and all I have was a ceramic uh, cartridge turntable, one of those cheapo pieces of crap. And this one I kind of destroyed, so. I'll try to get my hands on another copy of that one. Now we have uh, the best of Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, Volume One. This one, my my uncle gave me this one. Some disco music doesn't hurt anybody. It comes with uh, "Got to Get You Into My Life," "Fantasy." Can't hide love, love music, get away, that's the way the world, September, of course, uh, Shining Star, Reasons, Sing a Song, uh, well, and that's it, <laughs> that's all it comes with. It is, a, it is really clean and it is really well, pre well preserved. And I don't, I don't have it in a protective cover because it is in the original plastic right here. So you can see so yeah and as you can see round price by CBS also on cassette now now we come to my soft spot this artist I love this composer I love at least these three albums are just uh, some of my favorite uh, albums of all time. Jean Michel Jarre. We have Oxygen. What can I say? Synths. And experimenting with synths. <laughs> and, you know. Jean Michel Jarre. If you like synths, give this a listen, please. Uh, you have a picture of. Jean-Michel Jarre, himself, here on the back. And, well, this album is just, uh, it's considered, well, prog rock, 
by some uh, synth uh, rock, by some others. I just, I don't know what genre of music it is, but I just know that I love it. I love it. We have the follow-up to that album, which is Equinox. Pretty much more of the same, with um, a little bit more experimental, I would say, but just a tiny bit. And it sounds amazing. I actually do prefer it to uh, Oxygen. Equinox is beautiful. Another picture of this time in black and white. Another picture of Jean Michel Jarre, right there. And the third album. Le Chant Magnétique, or Magnetic Fields, although you lose the pun right there. There's a pun right there, which is Le Chant Magnétique. Now, uh, Magnetic Fields would actually be Le Champ Magnétique, not Le Chant Magnétique. It sounds almost the same but with a P right here, instead of a T. Um, this means uh, the magnetic... Uh, the magnetic... Uh, what is it? The magnetic songs, kind of. And the magnet... It's a pun in between the magnetic songs and the magnetic fields. This one actually comes with a little bit. These ones only come with uh, regular sleeves. This one actually comes with... I don't have the record inside here. I have it in a protective plastic sleeve. But you have right here credits on the Fairlight CMI screen right there. You have Jean-Michel Jarre himself right there looking very young. A chip Right there, probably 7400 series. Uh, waveform view from the Fairlight CMI, right there. That's probably the insides of a synth. Or the Fairlight CMI, I don't know. And a piece of a notebook, right there. Uh, quite a bit of this album was done with the Fairlight CMI, which means for some uh, that means that it's not as analog as Equinox or Oxygen, which, well, I really don't care. There's plenty of uh, there's plenty of analog synthesizers used on on the Chant Magnetique, regardless of, regardless of the Fairlight CMI being used. But, yeah, some people think that uh, using a Fairlight CMI kind of uh, dissolves the essence of using uh, all analog equipment to record your uh, your album. Now another composer that I really like and I have these two albums and I have to get uh, another one. This is Five Miles Out by Mike Oldfield. Now I actually got introduced to Mike Oldfield by a friend of mine uh, which is actually two years younger than me. I am 18 so, <laughs> I am 18, my friend is 16, and she's already into my coalfield. So there's still hope in the world. There's still hope in the world. So, yeah, Five Miles Out. Lovely, lovely album. Uh, as typical of... Uh, 
my Goldfields albums, uh, we have, well, not this, this is just a gatefold, and we have the track, uh, what is this, the track sheet for uh, Taurus 2, which is what's on side A, which is a single uh, 24 minute uh, composition, which is really, really beautiful. And well, as, 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 as I said, a typical of my Goldfield albums from this time period. On the A side, it is one long composition, one long piece, and on the B side, it's actually just uh, just a, a series of songs, as you can see right here. Well, I can't get this on camera, but Taurus 2 on side 1, side 2, Family Man, that was a hit. Or Abidu, Montiti, and Five Miles Out. I freaking love Five Miles Out. That track, that track I just love. And so do I love Taurus 2. And yeah, here you have the uh, lyrics for Five Miles Out. Embossed right here. Well, embossed, quote unquote, uh, on the track listing. Oh, this does. This camera looks like it does macro pretty well. So you have the tr the lyrics for five miles out right here. Um, right here you have pictures of of the team. As you can see, all the team that recorded this right here. You have Mike Oldfield with Mull Helicopter and all of the instruments that were used along this record, including a Fairlight CMI right there. If you haven't noticed, uh, I love the Fairlight CMI. I just love it. I think it's a lovely piece of equipment. Um, more pictures of the team. Lovely album. We put it back into the sleeve. There we go. Now we have, uh, well, the most well-known album by Michael Field, apart from Tubular, Be from Tubular Bells, Crisis. Who doesn't know Crisis? Uh, yeah, it's Crisis. I mean, what can I say about this album? It's Crisis. If you, ha if you haven't listened to it, give it a listen. It's Crisis. I mean, what can I say? Moonlight Shadow, you have listened to that song. There's no way you haven't. I mean, are you three? If you're three, then how the heck did you get uh, on this page? And if you're not three, uh, how the heck did you know not listen to Moonlight Shadow ever? Uh, I'm just asking you to give a listen to this album. It is a beautiful album. Crisis, again, another 24-25 minute uh, track, which is lovely. Moonlight Shadow in High Places. Foreign Affair, which is another lovely, lovely track. This is Foreign Affair is actually my favorite track on this album. Uh, I love uh, the vocals by Maggie Reilly. I don't like, uh, I don't really like her solo career, mainly because, yeah, her, the lyrics are really, feel really empty.
to me, but yeah. And Shadow on the Wall, I just hate. I hate that song. It, it just doesn't fit in at all. I feel like Mistake, which actually wasn't was released on the American version of this, on the well North American version of this album. Whoopsie! Whoa, that got too heavy for the flower pot. There we go. I feel like Mistake would have been a better uh, closer for the for the album than Shadow on the Wall. Shadow on the Wall doesn't fit in at all on this album. I mean, no, not at all. It it just no. I don't like that song at all. It just sounds like crap to me compared to the to the rest of the album it doesn't sound melodic it doesn't sound no it sounds harsh it sounds I mean it's not a bad song it just doesn't fit in with the rest of the album now uh, Pink Floyd wish you were here whoops let's turn this one around first so you can see the Watcher and the Tower, waiting hour by hour. Um, Pink Floyd, wish you were here. What can I say about this? If you don't know about this album, you don't know shit about music. It's mainstream as all fuck. It's an album that talks about, uh, you know, missing someone or something actually uh, it's a uh, an album that talks about absence in general not just someone but something uh, uh, morals uh, peace uh, well give it a listen uh, lyrics are kind of abstract in some songs so uh, just uh, give it give it a listen see what you make out of it as you can see this one is the American version I got this I don't know how this got in Europe but it is the American version I do have the European version but it is pretty much destroyed uh, this is the American version because the uh, man on flames the man on fire is actually leaning back in the European uh, European version the man on fire is actually leaning towards the front little bit of trivia right there now we're getting independent uh, Russian Red Agent Cooper Russian Red is the pseudonym of Lourdes, Lourdes Hernandez, which is a singer songwriter uh, from Spain, so local to me. She's from Alcalá de Henares, I think, which is a, a place in Madrid, which is where I actually live, so she's local to me. Um, yeah, lovely little album put out by her really really uh, detailed really good attention to detail on this album I doubt you can get this um, as you can see it is released by Octubre which is a Spanish uh, record label uh, I doubt you can get this from outside Spain, but it's in English, even if she's Spanish. As you can see, the lyrics this is the ly lyric shit, it's all in English. But yeah, lovely album. Uh, I don't really care for, for the lyrics, they're kind of Lana Del Rey ish 
so I don't really care for the lyrics because they're kind of silly but uh, the execution is certainly pretty good um, vocal performance is certainly a lot better than Lana Del Rey's Next, oh, this one holds a special place in my heart. Super Trump, Breakfast in America. This is actually my latest acquisition. Well, Super Trump's more, uh, most uh, mainstream, quote unquote, uh, album. Oh, what can you say? Side A is about a trip to America and how well it's just a joking around about what you can and you can't do on America and why you you'll get laughed at this one actually has an insert with a track sheet it's all in this art deco 50s uh, style, which I really like. As you can see, that's the insert. With the lyric sheet. So, I prefer side B of this record. Side A is pretty much just silly uh, jokes about America and uh, women it's all about women and women this and women that and yeah no and I don't mean women in a positive way I mean women in a sexist way now this is uh, something my parents gave me for my uh, birthday uh, last year this is the same album breakfast in America but in a picture disc uh, version. Now this I can't cannot listen to it. I'm thinking of hanging this one um, besides my turntable but this one it has a lot of surface noise and you pretty much can't listen to it. Uh, well, the last one is uh, this one. The Velvet Underground and Nico. Classic from the 60s. Uh, I don't really know that much about that, this album. I got it because it was uh, 12 bucks. I thought I was gonna be into it. And I'm not into it. I'm not into it at all. I don't like it at all. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's just too old for me. Uh, I don't like it at all. Uh, I just got it because it was 12 bucks. Uh, normal retail price was 23 bucks, and it was. It is an audiophile pressing by uh, vinyl lovers, and it has the original pe peeling banana, which you can actually peel this off. So, yeah, but. I don't like this album at all. It is influential. It was an influential al influential album, uh, one of the most influential albums in the whole industry. But I don't really care for it. I don't like it. I'm not saying I hate it. I just don't like it. There's definitely some catchy songs on it, but. I don't really care for it. So, that's my record collection. Um, here's a little bit of... This is all my record collection. It's really small, but... Hey, it's growing. It's growing every day. So, that's about it. 
I hope you liked my little analog uh, um, I don't know video into my record collection I'll be upscaling this to 720p and well yeah take care of your take care of yourselves and no uh, I cannot take the freaking OSD off I cannot this camera in playback mode does not allow me to take the OSD off because it is a cheap ass camera so well uh you know comment like subscribe and look forward for updates on this uh vinyl uh on this on my vinyl collection hope you like this video comment like subscribe whatever and bye